Hi everyone, uh, my name is Emmanuel Mobodo. I'm a specialist biomedical scientist and I'm also a lecturer in biomedical science here in the UK. I completed my PhD in biomedical science. I have extensive experience working in the NHS as a specialist biomedical scientist. And for many years, I have helped a number of people secure their dream job as a specialist biomedical scientist and also as a biomedical scientist. I'm here to help you to navigate through interview questions and thereby increase your chances of getting a job as a biomedical scientist. I ask that you like, share, comment and subscribe our page. Thank you. Hi everyone, so um, we have looked at quality control, so I try, I've tried to explain quality control, quality assurance, auditing, what to do when your QC fell, or when one of your analyzers start giving you abnormal results. So if you've not watched the video, please go and watch it, okay? Still on the control, it is very important. Remember that quality control, like I explained before, is a form of quality management system so because at the end we want to make sure that there that we maintain quality or standard within the laboratory okay these are important and i did mention things like in terms of um auditing where you cars can come in or in terms of external quality control where networks can come in so today we are going to be looking at networks report and also we are trying to, i'm going to try to explain Levagenis graph for you in a way that it will be very very simple for you to be able to understand okay this is also one of the common questions they ask in nhs hospital so they'll present a graph to you or they'll present the network's report for you and they want you to interpret the result so this is what we're going to look at today once again my name is dr emmanuel obodo i've been working in nhs hospital as a specialist biomedical scientist and I'm also a lecturer here in the United Kingdom in biomedical science. So let's get into it, okay? The outline for today will be to look at the Levagenis graph and then look at NEQA's report, which is National External Quality Assessment Scheme, okay? It's a UK scheme, okay? So the first thing I want you to look at here is that this is a normal distribution, okay, of a kind of Levagenis graph, okay? So this is a normal distribution. What it means then is that this zero here is your mean, your mean deviation, okay? Your mean standard deviation. So this is the mean. So you really want the quality control sample once it is at the mean, that is perfect, that is excellent. But, you know, sometimes you open the sample, it can continue to deteriorate. You might use it up to seven days. So sometimes, or depending on the temperature, like we explained, you know, on the previous video, you will notice that sometimes the QC result might be going towards the negative, or it might be going towards the positive. But we don't want it to go more than two, minus two SD, and we don't want it to go above plus two SD, okay? So this is complete, normally distributed, you know, quality control, okay? graph so let's look at this this is one of the examples of what you can see so it doesn't matter how they present it to you in the lab when you go for interview once they give you this kind of graph and they want you to comment on it i want you to think about this graph as a levagenis graph okay being a levagenis graph i'm going to explain what did levagenis said what does what does the graph interpretation of levagenis mean what does it really mean like i've explained on the previous slide what it means is that when you do your quality control you don't want it to be above plus two standard deviation or very below minus two standard deviation you want it to be between zero to plus or minus two standard deviation Therefore, Levagenis graph interpretation means is that when you do your quality control, you don't want it to be above plus two standard deviation or very below minus two standard deviation. You want it to be between zero to plus or minus two standard deviation. Therefore, Levagenis graph interpretation kind of says something like this that your quality control sample is said to have passed your quality control sample has passed if it is within 
plus or minus two standard deviation plus or minus two standard deviation so when you do your quality control is within plus or minus two standard deviation that quality control has passed okay in some cases depending on how the the quality control has been calibrated you might hear plus or minus three standard deviation okay but the common one is plus or minus two standard deviation so what does that mean I purposely show you this to show that these are different quality control done at different time. You can some of them are the middle, above or below, okay, the zero. It doesn't really matter provided that it is within plus or minus two standard deviation. However, remember that if you see something like this, it's still okay. But if you do a control and you notice that that control is falling very close to minus two or very close to plus two, even though it has passed, it suggests that it could be a problem so what you need to do is ideally not to validate that control and try to investigate why should that control sample goes towards very close to plus two or very close to minus two you need to investigate that or you if i were you i would look at it that that control could have possibly fell so it's worth investigating however if you have done it and it is within plus or minus so like if you have done it and it is well below from plus two or minus two that is okay but when it is very close to plus two or minus two if i were you i will investigate why that should be the case okay and then from your investigation you can consider some of the things that i mentioned when your quality control sample fell or what that can make your quality control sample to fail okay so that is it so levagenis graph once again said that your quality control sample has passed if it is within plus or minus two standard deviation now let us look at nequas report if you look at this nequas report if they present this for you during your interview don't worry so much where i want you to go straight and look at is di which is your mean deviation that is where i want you to look at so once you look at the di the number on that di should be your interpretation remember that i told you that every laboratory is being sent samples okay from nequas to run it and then they will submit their results and then nequas will give them reports so the report comes in this form okay so the di is very important now if you look at the di if it is one or less than one less than or equal to one you say it is excellent you tell them yes it means that the laboratory is performing very well that that is excellent if you look at the d1 and it is 1.5 okay you cannot say it is good meaning if it is 1.1 1.2 up to 1.5 you can say it is good if it is maybe 1.6 1.7 and up to 2.0 you can say it is acceptable however anything above 2.0 it means it has failed so when that report comes even a good laboratory, if they get acceptable, they will query why should they get acceptable. Because ideally, you should be going between excellent and good. But once it is 2.0, though it is acceptable, but every laboratory will need to investigate for that. So what happened in the laboratory, if such a thing happened, whether it is acceptable or whether it has fell, there is going to be meeting. So senior biomedical scientists and the manager, they will meet and they want to find out, discuss why should they have that possible kind of outcome. And that investigation might lead to something like investigating the equipment or the reagent or the method even used and that way they might decide to modify the method or they might decide to calibrate the equipment as the case to be to make sure that that will not happen again. Another type of thing like this. So when they present you something like this, don't think too much about it make sure that the line provided that it is not around the shaded column you can see the shaded column here i think from 100 once it is not around the shaded column that is fine so once again if they give you this look at this trend you are seeing this trend that you are saying each of these trending indicates different months different months that that quality code that they submitted their report to the um networks okay so once it is not in any of the shaded column that is fine tell them it is fine because it is not on the shaded column 
However, if you see anyone that is very close to the shaded column, again, it indicates that that could be a problem. And do tell them that even though it is not up to the shaded column, but this is problematic. And of course, that need to investigate in, maybe looking into the analyzer, calibration is it required, maintenance is it required, and something like that, okay? Then, of course, if it does touch the shaded column, tell them that that's at that point that they fell and again that need to be investigated so that is the kind of things that you will see when they present results for you so when you do get such result okay nequas report please these are your interpretations and these are what they're expecting from you okay so once again thank you very much you know for listening if you have any question please put your question or your comment you know uh, using the comment section okay Thank you very much till I come your way again. Once again, my name is Dr. Emmanuel Obodo. So please continue to subscribe, like, share, and send it to your friends as well. I think at this point now, I'm going to straightly start moving into blood transfusion. I've gotten a lot of requests about blood transfusion antibody panel. Don't worry, we are going to look at all these things in detail, and I'm sure you'll be fine and you will enjoy it. Thank you till I come back your way again. Bye.